Hi, and welcome to this latest immigration law update video. In this video, I'm going to look at Article 8 and adult relatives. And I'm going to consider the recent Court of Appeal decision in Mobeen. It's 2021 EWCA Civ 886, and it was handed down on the 14th of June 2021. The judgment here is by Lady Justice Carr, and it concerns a Pakistani widow who was 66, or, or now 66 years old, and her children now reside in the United Kingdom. She last entered in June 2014 on a visit visa, and since then she's resided with her son and younger daughter. She applied for leave to remain on Article 8, private and family life grounds that was refused and her appeals to the first tier tribunal and the upper tribunal were unsuccessful. Lady Justice Carr sets out the facts uh, in relation to her uh, background, her previous visits uh, to the United Kingdom. Also importantly shortly before she came her house uh, burnt down and she'd been widowed in Pakistan. She goes through the judgments, uh, firstly the refusal decision and the judgment of the first tier tribunal and in the judgment of the first tier tribunal the medical evidence is summarised in terms of her uh, depressive symptoms, her hypertension, uh, arthritis and the like. The judge, uh, judge's findings are set out at paragraph 14 in terms of her health. Uh, and issues in relation to returning to Pakistan. But note paragraph 16, the first tier tribunal judge made some credibility findings in terms of uh, the position in Pakistan and also uh, her health. The judge, uh, and it's cited at paragraph 18, citing the first tier judges paragraph 42, made this bizarre finding that family life didn't exist. And the basis for this seem to be a focus on what could be re-established in Pakistan. So the judge used the sort of facts that certain relationships could be re-established in Pakistan to say there was no family life in the United Kingdom. The judge went on to find the decision in any event would not be proportionate and also made an Article 3 finding. The Upper Tribunal and Deputy Upper Tribunal Judge Monson uh, considered the case of Kugarthus, which uh, is the leading case on adult Article 8 relationships, um, and found that the decision uh, was not irrational or perverse and upheld the findings of the first tier tribunal. The case was appealed to the Court of Appeal. I'm just going to go through the, the positions. Uh, and then the judgment continues by firstly looking at the adult dependent relative rules because as you know since the changes in 2012 on the 9th of July we now have the adult dependent relative route but that is only an entry clearance route and you can't apply in country to to start under that route. Then the Court of Appeal consider Article 8 and the application outside of the immigration rules. Uh, they summarise the case law on adults uh, and things like Kugarthas and ZB Pakistan. And to some really helpful comments now, and these are worth citing in your representations and your appeal skeleton arguments. So paragraph 45, whether or not family life exists is a fact sensitive inquiry which requires careful assessment of all the relevant facts in the round. Thus, it is important not to be overly prescriptive as to what is required and comparison with the outcomes on the facts in different cases is unlikely to be of any material assistance. Paragraph 46, however, the case law establishes clearly that love and affection between family members are not of themselves sufficient. There has to be something more. This is the Kugarthas point. Um, normal emotional ties will not usually be, usually be enough. Further elements of emotional and or financial dependency are necessary, albeit there is no requirement to prove exceptional dependency and you still hear it cited by the home office so exceptional dependency hasn't been established the formal rela formal relationships between the relevant parties will be relevant although ultimately it is the substance and not the form of the relationship that matters so for article 8 outside the rules it's the substance not the form that matters 
the existence of effective, real or committed support is an indicator of family life. So when you make your representations show there is effective, real or committed support. And here's a, a great sentence. Cohabitation is generally a strong pointer towards the existence of family life. That was considered previously in 2020 in the case of Yudin, and that was to do with that was to do with a foster child who who now reached the age of over 18 but still lived at home. So certainly for adult children, we can talk about continuing cohabitation being a strong pointer towards the existence of family life. And I've done a video looking at that case. The extent, and, the extent and nature of any support from other family members will be relevant, as will, will the existence of any relevant cultural or social traditions. So if you've got, say, a relative who always lives with the sons of the family and doesn't live with married daughters, that might be something. Or if you've got an adult daughter who's unmarried and culturally she's still part of the family unit, those are things uh, we want to refer to. Indeed, in a case where the focus is on the parent, the issue is the extent of the dependency of the older relative on the younger ones in the UK and whether or not that dependency creates something more than the normal emotional ties. So your focus in gathering evidence will be showing the extent of the dependency. So when you get medical reports, when you get independent social work reports, you're going to show those family ties and the extent of the dependency. Also, considering these type of cases, getting evidence as to what is available in the home country to show perhaps there's not availability of care, either domestic care to come into the house, say back in Pakistan, as in this case, or perhaps the lack of availability of care homes. Consider getting a country expert involved. Paragraph 47, the ultimate question has been described as being whether or not this is a case of effective, real or committed support, or whether there is the real existence in practice of close personal ties. Lady Justice Carr goes on then to look at the sort of lack of any real distinction between the positive and the negative obligation. She also touches upon Agiarco and what is the position of people who are here precariously and exceptional circumstances and also the interplay between the immigration rules and Article 8 and obviously uh, paragraph 52 that significant weight is going to be given to the Secretary of State's policy as set out in the immigration rules. So they then consider the findings on family life and find that the first tier judge had made an error in finding that family life uh, did not exist and that this finding was unsustainable. And the judge really was wrongly influenced by what was available in Pakistan in terms of children providing for house and paying for carers and the like. And that, what the Court of Appeal says, puts the cart before the horse. What arrangements can be put in place in Pakistan is potentially relevant to proportionality, see the final sentence of paragraph 56, but is immaterial to whether or not family life exists in the first place. And also paragraph 57, these are helpful for you to think about perhaps in your own cases, uh, that the judge hadn't properly considered the cohabitation since 2014, that was a powerful factor, that it wasn't just practical and financial support, there was also emotional support and she was recently widowed and lost her family home in a fire. And there was also, she provided some care for one of the children and to the grandchildren. So those were relevant considerations. So in terms of the finding on family life, the Court of Appeal would allow the appeal on that basis, but uh, they find that actually it wouldn't have made a material difference because the finding on proportionality uh, did not contain an error and was not flawed. One of the things they point out is obviously at paragraph 67 is the fact the appellant was applying outside the immigration rules and never came in under the adult dependent relative route it is a sort of negative point in the proportionality uh, balance, even though it's, it's not determinative of the question at paragraph 68. But ultimately, uh, the judge finds that the uh, first tier tribunal judge's conclusion on proportionality was uh, not defective and the upper tribunal were right to uphold that finding. So ultimately the appeal is uh, dismissed.
So really helpful stuff in terms of what is family life, in terms of adult relationships and what needs to be considered. More challenging in proportionality, proportionality and it's a reminder of the type of evidence that's needed. The, this appeal didn't sort of argue the point on 276 ADE6 and the very significant obstacles to integration, but that's also an avenue to think about. And in certain cases, that may be a way of arguing the case under the rules, but obviously you'd have to show how there are very significant obstacles to integration, and that's a slightly different focus to the Article 8 family life. But have a look at this judgment. There's some helpful stuff that you want to rely upon uh, in your representations when dealing with adult relationships in Article 8. I hope that's helpful.